I think it's been a year since I added the four feet of extension to the CNC table to build the adjustable vertical table onto the CNC table. Goes down. And it's been sitting for a year waiting for me to get to this project. So I'm finally getting to it. First, before building the, the table on the end, I want to replace my spoil board as it's been, it's been two years since I put this in and it's gotten kind of cut up. Now I could resurface it and probably get some more use out of it, but if I'm going to attach my new vertical table to it, it made sense to just make a whole new spoil board. So I would have as much life as possible with the end table attached to it. So I took the old table off and that was pretty easy. There's just bolts holding it down. And I cleaned out underneath the CNC. I'd like to also build some storage in the space under the table and not have it just be the, the sawdust junkyard that it is now. If the CNC table was a deck, these would be the joists. <laughs> so the joists weren't quite square with the table. So I wanted to straighten those out. So I spent a little time adjusting those and getting those nice and square. That way when I cut the holes for the bolts in the new spoil board, they'll be above the joists. Now I had put a temporary vertical table up to do a couple of projects and I wanted to take that down as that's where I'm gonna put the new table. And I wanted to move the leg supports towards the main table and adjust the joist on the end. And then there was a joist sort of floating in the space that the new table was going to be in. So I moved that as well. Now, I've also got a new fourth axis for the CNC, but I'm not going to show that just yet. But it is here in the frame, <laughs> and I know it's going to get noticed. Now to attach the new spoil board, I need to cut the holes for the bolts into the spoil board. And I need to hold the spoil board up off the frame while I do that. So I will cut some spacers and put those under the spoil board. And those will hold the spoil board up so I won't damage the aluminum when I cut the holes for the bolts. Then I'll just clamp the spoil board down at each end with some clamps. And I couldn't do all the holes at once. I did one end. Then once that end was done, I could put clamps there. And I could do the middle. And once the middle was done, I could then do the other end because I could take the clamps off of that end. So the holes for the bolts are a cylinder that's much bigger than the bolt then a sort of elongated circle in the bottom of that cylinder, which is where the bolt goes. And the shape of that hole allows for some adjustability in the location of the bolt. And this system lets the bolt sit below the top surface of the spoil board so you won't hit them with the router bit. I can put the bolts back in again, and my cross members or my joists were aligned much better this time. Now, I wanted to cut T-slots into the table, and on the last table, I just cut the T-slots the full length of the table, and I cut them with the, with the T-slot cutting bit the whole length. <laughs> but this time, what I thought I would do is go a little deeper, but make the slots only be between the cross members of the table. And I started by clearing out most of the material with a quarter inch bit. And once that slot was cut, I could then cut just the T of the T slot into each of the slots with the T slot cutting bit. So this meant the T slot cutting bit was only doing the last 10% of the cutting or so. Now, once all of that was done, I could flatten the table so I just ran the surfacing bit over the whole table. Now I went just a tiny bit deeper than I think I should have. 
maybe a millimeter too deep. <laughs> so really it's fine, but I might have one less chance to clean up the table. Now I can start working on the vertical table. So I brought over a piece of MDF for that. For this, I want to do something similar to what I had the last time, which was to just have a big surface with a bunch of rectangles cut into it. And the holes allow me to put clamps through the surface to hold things to this table. As this table won't hold flat things so much, like the big table will, it'll be more for holding odd-shaped pieces, like wood turn bowls and long vertical pieces that need a joint cut in the end of them. And I just cut them out on the CNC table so they'd be perfectly square. Now at this point, I was thinking I would make the table out of two laminated pieces. So that's what these were gonna be and I used a, a flush trimming bit to clean up the, the holes. Now I had spent quite a bit of time a few weeks ago coming up with systems to move the adjustable table. My first idea was to have a geared rack down. system underneath the main CNC Bait table to push the vertical table from vertical to horizontal. Goes down. And this would allow me to adjust the angle of the table by turning a crank. Up. But with this system, it seemed overly complicated and it put the crank far away from the vertical Bait table. So it was gonna be hard to see at what angle the table Bait was at. Down. Then I came up with a, with a different system that moved Bait the handle up. into the right spot and it was much simpler. But it down. was pointed out on Instagram after posting this that I could just make a ratcheting Bait system along the sides of the table and do away Bait with the gears altogether. I had sort of poo-pooed this down. idea because I really liked my gear system and I'd spent a lot of Bait time coming up with it. <laughs> but what I thought I would do to begin with was to sort of do both, to do a ratcheting system along the sides of the table where I could just lift the table into place and have it stop wherever I lifted it to and make the parts for a geared system in case that first system didn't work. So I got out a sheet of 5 8 inch birch plywood and I cut that down to a piece I could put on the CNC table. And my new hold down slots seem to work. <laughs> and I cut out the runners on the sides of the adjustable table and the gears to make the mechanism that would raise and lower the table. So I cut this in several passes, first doing the holes and then doing the shapes. So I installed the arcs that go along the sides of the adjustable table and those install into the frame the same way that the spoil board does, with the same little bolt detail in the wood. And it took some finessing to get those to, to go in, but they actually weren't too bad. I tried to come up with a shape so that when it was aligned right with the frame, it would put the center where the hinge is, so that the arc of the table would, would follow these rails. And really the idea for these rails originally and now that it's put together is that I can clamp the table at each side to these rails so that whatever raises and lowers the table isn't the thing that holds the table in place because it doesn't need to be rigid and move at the same time. So I'd like to add a piece of wood along the edge of the table that the hinge for the new adjustable table can attach to. Something a little denser than just going into MDF. So I, so I found this piece of maple that I cut, I guess, last spring. So hopefully it's dry enough, but I, I think I can find enough dimension in this to make the shape of the edge that I want to make. I just need to, I need to cut it to length. 
<laughs> and start to clean it up, get the bark off and join it and plane it. And I'm gonna make it so the, the section will be an L sort of. It'll, it'll wrap up over the edge of the MDF and then go underneath where I can attach it better. So it won't just be attached to the end of the MDF. And hopefully it'll give a better a better foundation for the screws of the hinge to go into. So that's the idea. <laughs> So I can drill the holes through the piece of maple to go into the spoil board. And I needed to make sure that those screws weren't going to be where the screws for the hinge were going to be. And before I actually attach the maple, I wanted to shorten up the spoil board and square up the end of the spoil board. So I cut off a little bit of the end. And this will hopefully put the center of the arc of the movement of the table in the right place. And I should have probably flattened the spoil board after I attached this maple piece so it would all be flush, but it's not a big deal. The next time I flatten the spoil board, I can do that. Now I can put in lots and lots of little screws for the hinge. Now I put the table on the floor and raised it up on some shims so I could get it to exactly the right height. And then from there, it was just a matter of putting the screws in. So it went pretty fast. It was just a lot of screws. <laughs> and it seems to work. It goes up. It does hit a little bit on the side next to where I'm standing. Now I can add the little tabs that are going to run along the arcs. And they will also hold the little ratcheting mechanism that will fit into the teeth on the arcs. It goes down. So I, I put those on and then realized that they really need to be connected. Because in order to move the table down, I need to be able to lift both sides at the same time. So I put a cross piece between the two. And the cross piece is actually the piece that I cut out of the L-shaped piece that the hinge is attached to. It was the right length and the right size. And it works really well. Works better than I thought it was going to. Goes up. <laughs> goes up. Goes up. Don't you just hate it when the simple solution but not the cool, full of gears solution is the solution that works. It works way better than you thought it would. <laughs> bed goes up, bed goes down. Bed goes up, bed goes down. So it was at this point that I was realizing I wasn't going to be attaching the other layer of MDF to the table, as that would just make it really heavy. And it didn't seem like I really needed it. So what I wanted to do was to add a little more structure to the underside of the table. So I came up with a new tab down. that goes along the side that works as a beam for the table and for the, the place to hold the little ratcheting piece goes up. and the place to be able to clamp the table to the, to the arcs on the side. And it has to fit into the frame of the CNC when the table's vertical. So it needed a, a very specific shape. And I wanted to put a piece on the end of the table as well. And that piece could just be a dumb rectangle. So it's just going to be a piece to go on the end of the table between the two end pieces that I had just made. And this will just help stiffen the table without adding too much weight. So at this point I have four pieces of structure around the four sides of the table, with the hinge being at the CNC side of the table. And I can reattach my little ratcheting pieces, and it still works, <laughs> which is good. It's the kind of thing where you do it the same way, and it should work just like it worked before, but sometimes it just doesn't. <laughs> Now, I wanted to start to come up with ways of holding things to the table. 
I'm figuring I'll do more of this in the future, but for now I wanted to make some kind of beam that would clamp a, a much thicker object to the table, like a bowl. And I came up with a bunch of different ways of doing it, and I even half built a few of them. But what I ended up with in the end was to just use threaded rod and a beam. So I can hold the threaded rod to the table by sandwiching the table between two scrap pieces of wood, which are what these are. Now I needed to cut my threaded rod to the right length. So first I came up with a way to hold it, and this worked pretty well. I also needed to figure out how long to make it. So I set up all the parts that I had for my little system to figure out what length of rod I needed. So I have the, the table on the right and the beam on the left, then a typical bowl, which was about six inches tall. So I figured out I could make the rod about 12 inches and it would be about the right length. And this actually cut really easily. I had thought the threads would get more screwed up and it would be hard to get a bolt on and off, but it actually wasn't too bad. Bait goes up. So you can see the, the table gets sandwiched, the two scrap pieces of wood, and the threaded rod holds that together. That gives the rods a lot of holding power to the table. Then I can put the beam section on and bolt that down. So this will just hold the object down to the table. And with the adjustable table, I can set all this up with the table horizontal. So nothing's sliding off or falling away. It goes down. And once it's all set up, then I can rotate the table to the right location. So with this, the idea would be to cut out a section of the bowl to then be infilled with a new piece and then turned on the lathe. Thanks for watching.